Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Welcome to a uh, video that I've been wanting to do for quite a while on this channel. So back in September, I procured a Socket 775 motherboard um, from eBay. Uh, cost about 50 bucks, buy it now, and there was also 35 starting bid. Um, I never have uh, shown that board on the channel from what I know, but basically what I wanted to do with it was build a Socket 775 gaming computer. Let me move my chair over so I can sit down. Gotta love doing YouTube, but... Um, basically, what I'm gonna be doing here is uh, building a Socket 775 gaming computer from just parts I have laying around and parts that I've purchased and parts that I've gotten for free, stuff like that. So this is going to be a three-part series. What I'm going to be doing is in the first part I'm going over the parts and I'm going to be doing a test bench build in the end. The second video will be building the system. The third video will be doing the uh, RAID array setup, more on that later, and installing Windows 8 and then moving that up to Windows 10. So. Um, like I said, parts and bench test in this video. So, to start off, this is the CPU right here. Um, move that up to the camera. You can see Intel Core 2 Duo. No, you can't see that. Hold on. Come on, iPhone. You can barely see that. It's a Intel Core 2 Duo E7200. Uh, this thing is running at 2.53 gigahertz. It's a dual core. Uh, eventually, I would like to upgrade this to some kind of Core 2 quad, depending on when I get my actual gaming rig built, or if I'm stuck with this for a while. So, um, I would like to go to a Q9650 or a Q6600, depending. Um, but that probably won't happen for a while. So, um, that's the processor. I got it out of a... Um, the Dell Inspiron 530, and um, unfortunately that machine was taken apart. So, um, cooling that will be the stock cooler from the Inspiron. Um, just a generic 80 mil fan on a heat sink. Um, mounting hardware does work. I'll be taking this off, putting it on the bottom, as we all know how to do that, and then PW on fan. So, um, pretty good. Uh, what else? Graphics card? This is the MSI GT610. I got this from my friend, and I was showing this in the uh, socket, no, the Inspiron 530 build. Um, this card's a 1 gig card. It has VGA, HDMI, and DVI on it. Uh, PCIe Gen, Gen 3, I think. Gen 2, maybe. 16X. Um, nice card. Gets the job done. Eventually, I would go like to go to something like a Radeon HD 6870 or 69 something, um, 6970, whatever those dual card or the dual GPUs are. Um, but that probably won't happen for a while, once again. So the memory, just want to balance it on my hand here. Um, we're going to be going with um, 4 gigs of DDR2. So uh, you can see we have four modules, each at a gig apiece. So the first one is a Hynix module, second is a Samsung, and then a two, uh, third and fourth are both Hynix. I got the two Hynix on four, or three and four, um, those modules, this module and this module, uh, from the Inspiron 530 when I first got it. And then the uh, first two modules, the uh, other Hynix and the Samsung, I, I got, <coughs> excuse me, I got from another 775 machine. Um, so many of those. I've gone through a lot of them, but um, that's what that, that that's where those came from. Um, four gigs of DDR2, 800 megahertz, from what I understand. Um, I would like to go up to something like a uh, eight gigs of DDR3 or eight gigs of DDR2. Um, not sure when that's going to happen or if it will happen, but hopefully it's pretty soon. So motherboard, uh, you can see here it's, let me move it around actually. 
It's a Gigabyte GAEP35C-DS3R. Uh, this board is socket 775, obviously. Um, it is from Gigabyte. Got this off eBay like I explained in the beginning. So uh, there are six DIMM modules. When I said DDR3 or DDR2, I meant um, yellow and red uh, support DDR2 and then green supports DDR3. So um, eight gigs of DDR... No, wait, 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 where was I going with that? Uh, eight gigs of DDR2 across those and eight gigs of DDR3. Um, I'm talking a bit fast. So uh, this board has a uh, P35 chipset. Uh, it has three PCI slots, four PCIe. Uh, three of those are 4X and then one is 16X. I think that's 4X, that might be 1X. I'm not sure what, um, if there even is a 1X, but I think people call that 1X or something, I don't know. Um, I've heard it around somewhere. But uh, we have six IDE or six uh, SATA ports here. These uh, purple ones don't aren't like, operational from what I understand <clears throat> unfortunately um, we could have eight running off of it but uh, it does have six um, SATA ports uh, here we have an IDE channel that's gonna be pretty nice if I want to throw like a uh, an IDE hard drive in here if I get like a really old Windows machine and want to have like some kind of OS running on that or I have an old hard drive that has a Microsoft Train Simulator on it, so I might plug it in there and like clone it somehow to a SATA drive, Windows XP, I think. Um, pretty nice. But um, two front panel uh, set, or USB uh, front panel I/O there, uh, power reset, all that stuff. Um, what else? Uh, like I said, P thirty or um, seven seven five and P thirty five chipset. So on. The back we have uh, two PS2 ports, SP diff or something, um, optical audio. We have eight USB 2.0, a gigabit LAN and audio. So pretty nice board. Um, probably will get the job done. I like the aspect that it has PCI, so I can run some other like older hardware off that. Because once this machine is not my gaming machine anymore, it will be my uh, Windows Ubuntu Linux kind of test machine. So what else? Hard drives. I'm gonna drop one for a sec. But these are dual Hitachi Desk Star 500 gig running at 7200 RPM. I believe they're SATA too. But um, they have, where did I get these? I got these out of one of my servers. Uh, it's the Dell PowerEdge 1950 we took a look at in the uh, the first video on my channel. Uh, the first video that actually had content tech related. Um, we have SATA power, SATA data, same on this drive, and we have a Molex. I'm going to be powering this off Molex because um, the SATA connectors won't reach uh, if I want to plug the optical drive in. <clears throat> so um, it does work, have tested it, but um, these drives will be in RAID 0, that's what the RAID array is, so it'll give me a terabyte of pretty fast um, storage. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's going to be really nice to have. And I just clipped one of them on the power supply. That's great. Hopefully it still works. I don't think I caused any damage. Um, this is our optical drive. You can see a uh, SATA optical drive. Got this out of the 775 Optiplex 775 parts machine. Um, generic optical drive. Like I said, SATA. So it will plug into the motherboard without any giant ribbon cables, which is nice. Um, I think that's it. So, <clears throat> power supply. This power supply we are going to be using is a high pro 305 watt. Uh, you can see down there, 305 watt. Um, got this from my friend Dimitri, same place I got the graphics card from. But um, it's a power supply. So it has 24 pin Molex, 4 pin CPU power, USB or um, PCIe 1.6 pin, um, a bunch of Molex connectors and a bunch of SATA connectors. Um, these Molex connectors and this little tree, one of them runs at 7 and one of them runs at 5 volts, or no, 7 and 12 volts rather. And that will be powering these two fans. These two fans will be going in the top and uh, this will plug into those connectors. <clears throat> 
and um, they glow blue. So in a red case, it does look pretty nice. I have tested it. And speaking of the, the case, let me lift this thing. It's kind of a bad angle that I had it at to lift it. But this is the Deep Cool Tesseract. Uh, it is black and red theme, as you can see, Deep Cool. Sorry for the bad angle, let me fix that. Um, PowerBook hardware over there. That was the previous video. So uh, you can see missing an optical or a five and a quarter placeholder thing. Uh, that is because we're going to be putting the optical drive in. So we have power, reset, USB 2, front panel audio, USB 3, power, and hard drive activity lights. On the inside, we have a, a red fan. And there, it looks pretty nice on that blue fans in the top. Uh, I've had this, I've had a system in here before. Um, and then I took it apart to film it. Uh, three pin power, there was also a uh, four pin Molex, but I snipped that off to put on these fans. Um, in the bottom or front here, there's also another one of those fans. Did the same thing with a connector. So in the back, you can see we have seven PCI slots and then power supply cutout, IO shield. Support for water cooling, more on that eventually, probably, maybe, probably not. Uh, you see we have USB 3, my motherboard doesn't have that, so it has a USB 2 cable coming off of it. That's how we're going to be plugging in both USB things. Uh, here we have front panel audio, another USB, and then power reset, power and hard drive activity switch stuff. So over here you can see we have... Um, something or other of four optical or um five and a quarter inch bays uh this one up here this one you can't put stuff in because it is blocked by the front panel um io power control stuff this one you can put stuff in this one you can put stuff in optical optical drive is going up here reservoir might go there for water cooling if i ever do water cool this system and then down here this is where a three and a half inch like a floppy drive would go or something like that so down here we have four hard drive bays, two of these will be populated. Uh, these are three and a half inch, then we have three two and a half inch, so I'll put an SSD in there eventually when I do get an SSD. But um, yeah, that may not happen. Let me just put all that aside. Um, pretty good cable management room in the back, but um, I'm not going to go over that. In the top you can see the fan holes for the uh, top fans that we're going to be using. So I'm going to move that down. And now I'm going to be doing a test bench build, or a test build. So let's begin now, I guess. Um, let me move that, move this in closer so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, but right here. Um, we're going to be removing this, so lift up on the, the tension thing, open that up, and you can see the bare pins. So let's orient the processor properly. I wish the light on my phone would work, but I'm recording with it. So I'm going to push my chair out slowly, hoping that I don't bump into anything, and put in the processor. So I think I think that was successful. Uh, Intel claims it's zero insertion force. That's what ZIF means. Um, that's not. You have to put a lot of force on that arm, um, not on the processor though. Uh, thermal compound. We're going with some uh, Antec Nano Diamond Six formula something. Um, I do recommend this over uh, Arctic Silver Five just because it's not as messy. Uh, huge thing on that. If you uh, in a few videos from now, we'll see an Xer being broken by it. Uh, so we'll just put push really hard on that because I don't have a lot of this left in here. It's kind of a lot, but what are you going to do? And I just realized CPU core. So let's grab my screwdriver and push that aside. Here's the CPU core. So we'll unscrew. The screws.
So it just screws on with four screws generically. Pretty easy to mount this thing, which is nice. And that pops off so you can see. Um, on the back of the motherboard, hopefully the CPU thermal compound doesn't come flying off, but that just presses on and it's um, sticky on the back. So it will not fall off the back of the board, which is nice. Losing its stick because I applied it and have taken it off many times. So we're gonna put on the CPU cooler now and we're gonna orient it so that the uh, CPU fan header is in a nice spot. Not a lot of cable mess there, you can see. Um, so pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw that down and screw down the other side a little bit. Actually, I'm going to screw this side down all the way. Then screw this down. So, then we'll put that one down all the way. And then screw that one in. Uh, 16 minutes and 40 seconds, that's pretty cool. So the uh, CPU is installed, and now for the RAM. So if you're wondering why I'm not doing this in the build video, it's because I am building the system now, uh, putting it in, or doing the test bench build or the test post thing, and then from there I am going to be uh, putting it in the case in the next video. So <clears throat> put that down. Put this one down. There we go, RAM is installed. So, what else? Um, forgive me, I have not, not seen. Oh, that was my phone charger, that was great. Let's put this on this book. the camera quite a bit. Got this book from, I believe, one of my old teachers. Um, shout out to her. Pretty interesting book. Um, I'll move this aside and throw on the graphics card. So that's just going to sit there. Power supply. We all know how those work. Pop in CPU. Going to pop in a uh, twenty four pin. And that's it, actually. So none of the uh, typical. PCIe power stuff for the graphics cards. That's pretty nice. That's a good thing about not having a high-end GPU. You don't have to do the test bench thing plugging it in. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. But before I do that, I'll grab a nice monitor. It's not a good monitor. A VGA cable. That doesn't seem to want to come through from my stack of, or my pile of assorted cables in my bedroom. That should and will be cleaned tomorrow. It's a three foot IEC cable. That's, that will come in handy actually in my server rack whenever I get around to doing something with it. More videos on that once again. In fact, you're going to see an X server video after this series from what I understand. So, 
Put that in. Um, I will fix the camera, don't worry. And I need power. This is turning into a kind of crappy video. Just because of the quality, you know. You know how that works. I need a longer power cable, but I can't find one. Is this one? Let's work. No, it won't. You know, it's whenever you need something that you can't find it, and it's annoying. That's why I'm using the other thermal compound as well. Because I couldn't find my Arctic Silver 5 anywhere. Something leads me to believe that my parents might have chucked it, but I don't really know. So, I'm putting the monitor in there. And it immediately turns on. So, you can see there. So let's go ahead and plug in a system. So, if we go down here, zoom in quite a lot, you can see the front panel. So, uh, yeah. Let's tap that with a screwdriver. Fans spin up. Nothing yet. Graphics card fan isn't spinning anymore, at least. There we go, now it is. After a restart. There we go, it does indeed post. I want to get a picture of the splash screen though. So you can see it posts, gives us that no boot thing. So I just want to show the splash screen. Hopefully it'll come up. Hmm, doesn't seem to show on this monitor, but there's a uh, gigabyte blah 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 thing. Um, yeah, so it does post. That's good. Right. Sorry, uh, forgot. Power strip is also powering one of my lights, but um, yeah, thing posts, thing works. Um, so yeah, that's good. So I'll unplug the power supply, unplug all that, but that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, look forward to parts two and three. Um, that's going to be pretty fun getting the system up and running, but um, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed. I know I didn't because I... I've filmed this video about 10 times already and it's all failed and I'm just gonna, you know what, this video was kind of bad. I'm just gonna stick with this one because it's probably the best. And I've been actually able to finish it properly. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in part two of the uh, Socket 775 uh, gaming computer build. We are going to be building the system.